My name's Anthony Joshua, and you're listening to Sports Tonight. That Klitschko fight, a lot of pundits, a lot of experts in boxing described it as a throwback fight from, mm -hmm. a, from, a, from a golden era. Did it feel like one at the time? To a certain degree, there's certain fights where sometimes you're in it and you're just going through the motions and there's certain fights and you're, you're in it and you're thinking, this is unbelievable. And me and Klitschko, it wasn't a fight where we were scared to trade and you know, we just wanted to tap each other and go through the motion. This was pride, mano a mano. You know, are you fit enough? Do you have enough courage? And do you have enough pride to go through whatever it takes to win? And I think I got the victory, Klitschko didn't, but he walked out as a winner in my opinion because of the performance he put on and everyone watching were winners as well because they enjoyed the night as well. The fifth and sixth rounds, do you have much recollection from those two rounds? Ah, forget about those. <laughs> <laughs> the 11th. The, yeah, I can talk about the 11th. <laughs> no. The fifth and sixth, you know, that, that's like a... That can inspire a kid because it's tough times going through them and coming out on top and 11th round is sticking by, um, sticking by what I've been taught, persevering the hard times and then I kind of got the victory in the end. So that, that's like the storyline behind the whole fight is tough times don't last but tough people do. The heavyweight boxing division, it, it feels like it's on the crest of a wave. Next year you're going to try I think to become the, the unified undisputed super heavyweight champion. Is, is this a landmark year, potentially 2018, for heavyweight boxing? No doubt, no doubt. And it, in the sense of, it's been four years in the making, and if we can kind of pinpoint it for 2018, I'm ready, because there's a lot of people talking, and we always say talk is cheap. So I'm listening to what the people want in the arena, I'm listening to what people want that I'm speaking to, and they're ready to see, like, who, who is the king of the heavyweight division, to a certain degree. And um, I'm putting my throne up, I've done it since my 15th fight. You know, I challenged for the world title early on, so I'm always welcome to challenges, and 2018 will kind of mark another year of more challenges, so um, I'm embracing every opportunity that comes my way. And we've seen some spectacular fights this year. Obviously, yourself involved in some, and, and Triple G, Canelo. Yeah, yeah, Obviously, yeah. Mayweather McGregor was yeah, yeah, what yeah. it was, but um, I was, uh, we were interviewed Badu Jack, and his promoter, Amir, was like discussing uh, boxing as a, as a business masquerading as a sport. Um, and I just wondered whether you were ever you ever felt disillusioned by by boxing as a business, or or whether you just kind of focus on what you need to do in the ring. It's interesting because I'm a big fan of Mike Tyson, and he was he always taught us is that as a fighter, your only instinct is you know that mindset of an animal instinct that it's war, but at the same time, and you let the people in suits and ties do business. But I think that history repeats itself. And there's great champions that have lived and taught us the good ways to handle your business inside the ring and the good ways to handle your business outside of the ring. So I've combined the two. I've um, worked with people who are loyal to me and I'm loyal to them. And um, it's working just fine, you know. So I'm happy with what we're doing and I just want to see what else we can achieve. And that O, oh, Floyd Mayweather, I guess he built part of his aura on, on that undefeated yeah. record. You're undefeated, Wilder's undefeated, yeah, yeah. Fury's undefeated. Yeah. How is that O oh, to some degree stopping these mega fights from getting made or at least making them harder to make? I don't think so. Not in my opinion. I don't know anyone else's strategy, but for me, as I always say, it's like Mayweather's one in a trillion with that O. Oh. And he's had tough times too, so it's not always been he's gone in there beat up an opponent for 12 rounds, walked out with not a bruise on his face. The reality of boxing is that once you reach an elite level in any sport or any business, you're going to meet people that are going to give you stiff competition. And at heavyweights, even the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali and Foreman's and Jack Johnson's and these guys, at some stage, they've taken a loss. But if, if you lose, it doesn't mean that's the end of you. It's how you come back from there. So I always say it like this. Most champions are two-time heavyweight champion of the world, three-time heavyweight champion of the world because they've achieved, they've made a mistake, they've learned and come back better. And that's just the way of life and that's the way in sport and business. So um, I read a lot of inspirational books and you hear of businessmen making certain decisions that didn't work out for them at the time. But you can share your struggle because most people can relate to that. It's not always a success story. Do you know what I'm coming from? So in my opinion, losing my O will never hold me back from competition because I thrive with it and it only makes you a better person in the long run. You've got 20 knockouts from your 20 fights. 
Do you feel like you need one? Because I mean, obviously with the Triple G Canelo fight, one of the judges' scorecards, I think it was Adelaide Bird, scored the fight crazy, right? Yeah. It, Does it, boxing, it, in a way, need to look at how it judges fights going forward, do you think? I've always said like this, is that it's interesting because the scorecard can kind of determine the masses of people's opinion on, let's say me and you're competing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so the, the scorecards, if I've got a really bad scorecard, people won't respect me because they'll look at the performance, but all they remember at the end of the fight is a scorecard. And if you haven't watched the fight, news is short, it's straight to the point, scorecard was a wide margin, so they'll rate you a lot higher than me, but they could have been a good, a good competition. But I would say, don't leave it to the judges. <laughs> Never leave it to the judges. You have to outclass, out, outthink, outstrength your opponent and just try and, just try and do everything in your power to kind of um, just take things into your own hands. That's why I never leave it to the judges' opinion and that's why I've tried to always go for the, the knockout or stoppage in my fight. Let's talk quickly about the future. Deontay Wilder, he's been very vocal, as have a few other people yeah. on social media. Is Deontay the fight you want in 2018? Yeah, why not? It's as simple as that. And I've always done my business, you know, in the gym. I give them a little bit on social media and stuff like that. I've always handled my business in the negotiation room behind closed doors. And when things are done, I announce them. I'm not in the business of making promises that I can't fulfill. That's why I'm working on getting this fight done. I've actually taken it underneath my wing and my team's wing to make this fight happen. 2018, providing that Deontay Wilder is true to his word, you'll see this fight happen. It's, it's simple business. We've worked with all-time greats like Klitschko. We've managed to defend this title five times. And it's simple business, but I hope people don't make it as awkward as they want it to be. If they're realistic about what they want, we can definitely make this fight happen. And Joseph Parker, he's obviously a stepping stone to, to become the undisputed. Never a stepping stone. Never a, Never stepping, a stepping stone. stone. They're all challenges. They're all, they all could be my last fight. So I don't want to, you know, in my mind as a challenger, because I'm never going to put myself on a pedestal. I always have to keep that challenger's mindset. So I can't look at Parker. I can't look at the up-and-coming heavyweight as a stepping stone because in the heavyweight division, I think one mistake, you know, it's like snakes and ladders. You go back down the ladder and got to work up again. So Parker's definitely a real challenge. And a quick word on Tyson Fury. Would it be good for the sport of boxing if he were to come back? To a certain degree. You know, I'm, I'm always quite positive about other fighters. Sometimes... There's a lot more I could say um, and be a lot more reckless, but I'm going to keep very professional and I'll say, I wish Tyson Fury the best. You know, it'll be great to see him back because I, it's not what he says. I'm not interested in that. It's just a fight that people want to see. And um, providing he's back, it's a fight that I'll make happen. And as they all say, it will be one of the biggest boxing fights in history. So. Let's make people proud. You, you, you said in a recent interview that you wouldn't like, you, or you were uncomfortable comparing yourself with Ali and, and Mike Tyson. If you become the first heavyweight in history to unify all the belts, would you feel that you were in that category? 100%. Because we've done something incredible, tangible, and we have the assets to prove it. And that's why I always say is that, like the proof's in the pudding. When I negotiate the fight, once it's done, I will announce it. I don't like to talk about it. I'm this, I'm that, I'm that, when I haven't got it. So once I do have it and I'm on the journey, for instance, the fight is a week away, I say I'm on the verge of becoming, or I'm on the verge of mentioning my name alongside the greats like Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson. At the minute, I'm a prospect and I know where the future holds, but I'll just keep a lid on all this. Uh, I'll keep a lid on it for now because um, we've still got so far to go. Final one, Anthony. What's more likely in 2018, you becoming the undisputed world heavyweight champion or England winning the World Cup? <laughs> Both will be good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, my money's on you. <laughs>